Greetings, I am Dr. Nielsen, founder of Nielsen Holistic and the husband to the founder of DonEatWeat.com, my sweet wife, Jalene Nielsen. Now, it is my responsibility to show all of you how to be able to create the centerpiece of Thanksgiving. Yes, I did dress up. It's very important, the centerpiece of Thanksgiving. I thought we got to show some respect to the turkey dinner. I'm just joking. But it is very important. And I want to start in a training. This is a training. This is a how-to video. How to prepare the most amazing gluten-free turkey that you've ever eaten. It is pretty important. So, I am going to take that responsibility. First of all, first things first, we do have a couple of preparation items. Obviously, I'm not going to stay in my suit the whole time, but I just wanted to start out and do this first little part because this is important. Open hands. Open your hands. Go like this. Your hands need to be washed, first of all. Yes, I already did wash my hands. I washed them several times. They're getting a little bit dry. You need to make sure you go ahead and wash your hands and get ready to prepare this Thanksgiving dinner. I remind you because that is just a very important step that a lot of people forget. Also, if you do have some sterile gloves, I might recommend using some sterile gloves. I'm going to show you those, not show you those, but show you how to use those so that you can, if you're by yourself, be able to prepare this special Thanksgiving bird without a lot of cross-contamination. Some of the things that you'll need as well is a half teaspoon of dill weed, a half teaspoon of oregano, and these are dried, and a half teaspoon of thyme. Those are some of the seasons, seasonings we're going to use. We're also going to use an orange. This will be optional. Um, definitely olive oil, pure virgin olive oil. I'll skip this one because I'll save this one for last. This is very important. Garlic powder, dried parsley. <clears throat> you can use uh, fresh parsley, but I'd recommend the dried parsley. Also, we're going to use onions. So I already pre-cut the onions, and this is very important. Cut the onions, about um, an onion and a half, a medium-sized medium -sized onion, onion and a half, or large onion. You can see this. This is about a little bit more than a cup. I also did three cloves of garlic, not the whole garlic, just three cloves. The other super, super important part of this would be the Premier Pink Salt. The sea salt, we recommend the Premier Pink Salt, you can use another sea salt. You can also use some other things like seasoning salt, but I'm very careful about seasoning salt. As you can see, these ingredients are very simple. Seasoning salt sometimes will have some added ingredients that might have some gluten in them or Autolyzed yeast, which is MSG, monosodium glutamate, which I highly recommend against. I'm against that. Yes, I am. It will cause a lot of problems in the system. So I recommend using the natural ingredients, as you can see. You can also use fresh. In this case, we're using some dried. You want to use a good, reputable company. Wash your hands. Prepare ahead of time. And let's go ahead and take out the bird out of the fridge. And I'll talk a little bit about how to prepare it how much time you need to thaw and those type of things. Give me just one moment, I'll take the bird out of the fridge. Now, it doesn't really matter where you get the turkey. I recommend if you can, get a free range. If you can't, that's fine. Whoa! Had a little, uh, the fridge gave me a little jolt there. So yes, I would recommend if you can use a free range, also, generally a turkey is going to come frozen for most of you, and that's fine. You want to get the best natural turkey that you can, do the best you can, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the turkey. On the back side of the turkey will be some instructions. They're going to tell you about how long you need to be cooking the turkey. Also, you want to find out how much the turkey weighs so that you know how much time to be able to cook it for. As it says as well, you want to have an internal temperature of the turkey of 185 degrees. You guys remember this. This is very, very key. 185 degrees to make sure that the bacteria inside the bird has been completely taken care of. Now, generally you're going to thaw the turkey for two to four days. So if it does come, if you do purchase it and it's frozen, you're going to thaw where? Where do you thaw it? Do you thaw it on the counter? No. Do you thaw it? in water. No, I would actually recommend thawing it in the fridge for two to four days. You can actually feel it. Now this bird, this turkey, it, there's still a little bit of ice on it. I can feel it. That's fine. 
it's mainly thought otherwise. That's okay. Now, on the back you will also see some instructions. So this bird weighs 15 pounds. So I have calculated 15 pounds. I'm going to be cooking this bird for about mm, four to five hours. That's appropriate, four to five hours. And what we're going to do is start out the bird on a little bit higher temperature. I'm going to recommend starting it out on 400 degrees and cook that for 30 minutes. So 400 degrees for 30 minutes and then you're going to turn it down to 325. Does that make sense? So I'll go ahead and what we're going to do is cut the bird open before I even explain. I'm just trying to explain it before I actually do it because I won't show you all the steps. I just wanted to show you what we're going to do. So we'll go ahead and take off the netting. We're going to cut the bird open and you want to make sure you have it over to the sink. You can't see my sink right now but it's over there. You're going to wash it off with cold water. Some people also wash it off with a little bit of soap. Just make sure you get it completely washed off. You want to rinse it completely off so you don't have any soap obviously. So we'll rinse it off thoroughly. Now what you'll also recognize is inside the turkey where it's being held up there's a cavity. You need to make sure that you get the neck out of the cavity. I use the neck and I actually put it in the roaster for extra gravy. You don't have to use it but this is actually if you want to add more drippings to the turkey you'll actually use the neck. Also up in where the neck would normally be there's going to be a little little pouch and it will have the giblets or the giblets however you say it doesn't matter but you do need to make sure you take those out. Once you've taken those out completely set them aside completely wash the neck as well now you have your turkey you need to rinse that thoroughly completely rinse it like I said some people use soap like a dish soap make sure you get it completely rinsed off clean it very well inside and out make sure you clean out all the water inside and all the junk whatever is inside clean up in the cavity up in the neck so you'll clean everything here's this is actually the legs up here will be the the uh, neck area and you'll clean all the crevices out to make sure it is completely clean. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to go ahead and put the bird back and we'll finish up this first portion. So, just a little review. Wash your hands. Make sure you have your spices and everything ready. If you can, use some gloves. Then you're going to cut it open. You're going to clean it thoroughly. Make sure you take out any, take out the neck. Make sure if there's any ice as well. You want to make sure that's all cleaned out. Take out the giblets, clean it thoroughly. After that, what we're going to be doing is taking some olive oil, and I will show you. We'll get it in the turkey pan. We'll, after it's all clean, and you can pat it dry if you prefer, that's fine. And then just with paper towels, don't, don't use a cloth, just use paper towels so you can throw them away. Remember, you don't want to touch anything after you've touched the turkey. So what I recommend doing is then adding the olive oil to the turkey and that's why I'll use one hand. I'll start out the turkey, I'll hold the turkey, put it in and then we will actually, I'll take off one glove, use that for my glove that's touching the different items and I'll use the other glove hand to rub the oil on and then we'll sprinkle on the different seasonings. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. I just wanted to make sure that you had that preparation. Remember one other key, you want to make sure that the, the turkey is 185 degrees internal temperature. You can use a thermometer to be able to check that. The other key would be to thaw the turkey ahead of time. This is so important. You cannot get to Thanksgiving Day and say, oh we didn't thaw the turkey. You need to thaw the turkey. There are some ways to be able to cook it when it's not thawed. I highly recommend two to four days beforehand, probably four to be realistic. As you know this is four days and it's already, it still has a little bit of ice. So I recommend two to four days in the fridge so it's completely thawed. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we'll go into the actual demonstration portion of this video. Excellent. So once again, make sure you wash your hands. That is a very important step. As you know also, I'll be using um, some gloves. So as, after you've got them all dried off, go ahead and put on, put on your gloves. If you don't have gloves, you can just make sure your hands are very washed and that's fine. I would use paper towels again so you don't have to use um, a cloth, so you're not contaminating the cloth if you're going to be reusing it. So we have our turkey behind us, getting our gloves on. 
Now, I said earlier, it was kind of funny, but I said to cut the turkey. You're not going to cut the turkey. You're actually going to cut the, you're, you'll cut the netting and then you'll cut the bag of the turkey. You don't want to cut the turkey, actually. You want to cut the bag of the turkey. I actually have some scissors. So we'll just go ahead and cut the netting. And then what we'll do is we'll cut into the bag of the turkey. Just pierce that good. It's, just cut the bag of the turkey. Try not to cut the turkey. I'm just going to go ahead and move this down into the sink. Another good step is to if you don't have a nice pan like this and it fits right into your sink, you'll want to make sure you wash your sink. Um, now you can see I'm opening up the turkey. Um, one other thing you want to have on hand is a garbage handy so you can go ahead and get rid of the, um, the bag and the netting. So as I showed you before, the turkey has a little bit of It has a little bit of the dripping still, and it has a little bit of ice on it. I'll go ahead and just throw this away. Give me just a moment here, and we have the garbage right here handy. Excellent. So now what you'll do, and I like these type of faucets, they're a medical type faucet where you can just turn them on with your hand. I'll go a little bit less. Good, and we'll just want to thoroughly rinse that. Now as I showed you earlier, I'll go a little bit less. As I showed you earlier, You want to make sure this area, I can turn this off for a minute. So you'll make sure that you take this area, you want to get the neck out of the inside of the turkey. Okay. Also there is a holder that they use in the processing of the turkey. You'll want to go ahead and take that off as well. And then from the other end, you'll want to take out the uh, giblet bag as you can see. Okay. So you'll take that out, you'll put that to the side as well, and then you're going to rinse out all the cavities of the turkey. Make sure it's completely rinsed out, make sure that any of the ice is also taken out, and that way you get a nice clean turkey. Does that all make sense? So you'll turn it on, scrub it off, rinse it well. You want to rinse the inside of the turkey, take this off. Go ahead and rinse the inside of the turkey very well. Make sure that's all cleaned out. You rinse the top of the turkey. So as you can see, we're rinsing it all. I made sure that the pan is or the turkey is up and off the pan. Make sure it's all rinsed. And it seems to be all rinsed cleanly. If there's anything in the middle here that needs to be taken out, go ahead and take that out. That's all clean. Have your pan close by. We'll go ahead and transfer it. And then we'll go and demonstrate how to season the turkey now. So what's nice about this is I can actually take these gloves right off and then it'll be clean. Welcome back. So now we're going to take the bird, the turkey. And earlier I said, you know, if most people are going, most, um, families are going to have a, a frozen turkey and that's fine. If yours is a, you know, a wild turkey or a cage-free turkey, that's fine as well. It doesn't really matter. Now the preparation is pretty much the same. You've washed it. You've taken it from the sink over here. Make sure you washed it thoroughly. Again, if you needed to clean out the sink or your pot, make sure it's very sterile and clean environment. Now we brought it over here and I did put the neck in here as well to create a little bit more of the drippings that I like to use for the gravy. So we'll first start out pretty easy. One thing I didn't do, and, I, and I'm glad I actually didn't do it, is I'm going to turn this on its breast side up first. Breast side up first, okay? A turkey, most people cook their turkeys with the breast side up. 
Now this is a secret. Listen up very, very carefully. If you want the moist, tender breast meat, which most people's turkey is so dry and you have to use a lot of gravy, you want to put the breast meat down. In the wild, a turkey is breast down. Its back is its back. Does that make sense? Because it's up, so the breast is down. So you start with the breast up. So I'll go ahead and put on quite a bit of oil, as you can see. Significant amount of oil. And we just rub it all over. And then we're going to add some pre-cut onions, like I had showed you earlier. See, what's nice is I can keep my hand that's touching the turkey. And I already opened up these bottles as you noticed. And that way, what's nice about having the bottles already open is you don't have to have two people. A little bit of garlic powder. I'm going to use quite a bit of the sea salt. I open it up to the largest setting as you can see. I'm using quite a bit. This will be going on the bottom. Now one other thing if you notice we added quite a bit of the onions inside the cavity. Also, what, wait one moment. One thing I didn't notice is I didn't get my other herbs that I was using. So you'll hold on just one moment. Great, and I already put my herbs a half teaspoon of thyme, a half teaspoon of dill weed, and a half teaspoon of oregano, and they're all dried. Now I'm going to mainly put this inside the cavity of the turkey. And I'll sprinkle just a little bit on the outside. Good, now I'm going to turn this over. And I'm going to do the same. I'm also going to sprinkle up a little bit where the neck would be. I'm going to pour on copious amounts of the olive oil. As you can see, we'll get under the wings. Plenty of olive oil. This is really quite easy. Not too bad. Add a little bit of the ground garlic. Not too much. Going to add some salt. And I'll add quite a bit to actually get it basted down. Pasted down, I should say, on the turkey. Perfect. We'll add the rest of the onions and a little bit of garlic mixture. Put some under here, put some up in front. too bad. Now, I decided to go ahead and add, as you can see my parsley is already ready, parsley to be honest isn't going to give you a lot of flavor, it's kind of more for looks. Now again, this is the back, what's interesting is the breast is down. Very good. And you don't have to add that much, but that's what I decided to do. Now I'm just going to add a couple of oranges, and they're mainly for looks. They're not going to give you a lot of taste. I'm going to add those oranges on the back. Then, if you don't have a lid that fits over the turkey, and a lot of the bigger turkeys, they're going to be the tom turkeys, you're going to need to use tin foil. And as you can see, I will put this last little bit of herbs we have there, good. If you need to use some tin foil, that's fine. If not, I would prefer, you know, a lot easier is to just put on um, the lid. So we'll go ahead and put the lid on. You're going to put the oven to 325 degrees. You should already have it preheated. And you'll go ahead and put that in the oven. Now, one other quick reminder that I didn't tell you, and I am going to take this off, and I'm glad I didn't remember so I could actually show you, is I'm going to add an extra cup and a half to two cups of liquid or actually water so there is actually some extra juice in the bottom of the pan. And so I went ahead and um, grabbed that water. I'll just go ahead and put the water in. I actually did two cups of water and I'm going to add that into the bottom. 
And the reason why is because I like a little bit more gravy and that will help with the drippings. It also makes sure that the turkey doesn't get dry. The lid on and we'll put this guy in the oven. Now watch this, this is very nice. I can actually just do cleanup. I didn't touch any of the sides, it's all clean now. I just go ahead and throw that in the garbage and now we're ready to put this in the oven. If you have any questions about the centerpiece, the amazing centerpiece, the turkey, Remember, I dressed up for this, for the turkey, because it, because it is the centerpiece of Thanksgiving. So we want to bring you in, show you this way that we do our turkey. Again, breast down, that is a secret. After the turkey's done, I think I might show you one other secret, and that is to, oftentimes, you need to put your, I'll tell it to you right now, since you've stayed on this long. I know it's getting a little bit, this is fun, but I know it's getting a little bit longer, and I want to wrap this up, is that you'll put the turkey back in the drippings and that's another key that we found that keeps the, the meat nice and moist. Most people just cut it off and leave it out in the uh, dry plate or whatever. So those are the keys. If you have any questions, go ahead and email us or text us. I am Dr. Nielsen. My last thing is this, is remember, live in fullness every day, especially this Thanksgiving.